Well, hello, howdy, and hi. Shabbat shalom to all the brethren and all those seeking the most high. I would love it if you'd like and subscribe and share to all the new subscribers. Welcome. Thank you for stopping in. And again, I always tell you, follow no man. Even if you like his teachings, doesn't mean everything he tells you is the truth. You may think it is, but bear it out in Torah. Study it out in Hebrew, study it out in each Hebrew letter and each Hebrew word and not just James Strong Concordance Hebrew. Dig deeper. There's a lot to this. You could spend a month just digging out the first five verses of Bereshit or Genesis. So I encourage you, again, let every man be a liar, but the word, the Debar of Yahuwah is truth. And his Torah is the truth. So we're going to talk about more traditions or Torah. And today we see many people out there, whether to be Mohammedan or Christian or even calling on the name of Yah, that they're still trying to do away with certain things in the Torah or they're trying to supersede them with other teachings. It might be other books that have been corrupted that have, we have no originals of. And if you line them up directly against scripture, you can see exactly when and where the, the, they, they took place and how they were corrupted. But I don't discourage you from reading them if you're strong in your belief in Torah. And why wouldn't we be? The Messiah said he is the Torah. It's the way, the truth, and the life. And we know that Psalms 119 says that Torah is the way. And Torah is the truth. And in Deuteronomy, it says his words, his Torah our life. So that was in 30. So we know that the Messiah was proclaiming himself to be the very thing that Bereshit bara sheath in the beginning or at the, at the, at the creation. So bara Elohim Eloftal. So Bereshit bara Elohim Eloftal. So if we're looking at uh, those verses, he's saying he brought forth the Eloftal. The Aleph and the Ta, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the letters, every word formed, every word that would be spoken, and every word that Yah would bring forth for his creation to take place. That is the Mashiach. Again, I bear all things out. So let's go in and look at when people say he came and did away with those things, or those things are for the Jews, or those things have changed. Well, we don't have to keep the Moedim because we're not in the land or we don't have to do this or we don't have to do that or his day starts at a different time now or it never was this or it never was that. And they bring forth all these other teachings, but the Torah, that's your standard bearer. So let's go look at what Yahushua said about the Torah and whether or not it has indeed been superseded by a new instruction. But let's start with the word Torah. The word Torah can mean law, but it means commands, and it means instructions. His commands, his edicts, his instructions. It's not forcing us. So there's more than one Torah in Scripture. There's many Torahs. There's the Torah of your mother and the Torah of your father. They might be different. The Torah means the instructions of your mother. Don't forsake it. Don't forsake the, the instructions that your mother gives you and the instructions that your father gave you. They're not going to be contrary to, to the Most Highest Torah. They're going to be the, they're going to be firmly fit within it. But they might have you say, "Take out the trash," or "Go slop the hogs," or "Go feed the chickens," or "Go whatever it would be that you would be doing today, or even back then." Go tend to the sheep. Um, go out into the fields and check the grains. These would be commands. These would be their commands, their instructions, and don't forsake them. So we see that the word Torah is often bantied around as law, but it's also bantied around as a misunderstanding. That's why Shaul is so misunderstood. And he's the one we call Paul. So we're going to go into see what Messiah said. And this should be the standard bearer of all the scriptures. When we talk to people, we'll say that was for them and that was for them. And, but let's see what the Messiah said. Okay, so we say, uh, first of all, a scriptural fundamental which suggests the Torah of Elohim has abiding validity uh, is that Yahushua the Savior himself said so. 
Yahusha stated, do not think, don't let it enter your mind, don't even, don't even ponder upon this, that I've come to abolish the Torah or the Nabi'im, prophets as we say. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. What were the proclaimers, the Nabi'im, they were the ones that proclaimed what was going to happen in the future. And basically, they, he fulfilled what they said. He also fulfilled all that the Torah said. I tell you the truth, until the Shamayim in the earth or the Eretz disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the Torah until everything is accomplished. Matthew 5, 17, 18. This is probably the most forceful and the most explicit statement in the uh, Brit Hadashah, the New Testament, regarding the abiding relevance of Elohim's Torah. The straightforwardness of Yahushua's assertion cuts across much of the argument of contemporary teachers and preachers who insist that the Torah has been done away with. Even a casual reader of the verse above will put to rest any doubts for the honest interpreter of the Torah is an abiding reality. Yushi emphasized the preeminence of the Torah by comparing its uh, longevity to two future milepost events. And yet the phrases until the Shamayim and the Eretz disappear, heaven and earth, and until everything is accomplished. If you look around you, and if you're watching this video, guess what? Neither of those things have happened yet. So what's that mean? That the Torah, no, not the smallest stroke of the pen has passed. So denote that not much of the temporal limitation of the Torah, but the continued maintenance of it. That's what a Netzar is. It's one who observes and guards. We're guardians of his word and his name. Not only is this so, but the Messiah stressed that the Torah would remain valid in all of its detail. The Yod and the Tad are the smallest and the most easily overlooked letters or marks of the Hebrew, Aleph Beit. The point Yeshua was making is quite obvious to his hearers. Even the smallest letters, the smallest strokes are not insignificant in terms of their abiding relevance. Every tiny detail of the Torah is to be a lastingly valid until everything is accomplished of which the Torah speaks. The passage of scripture flies in the face of dispensational teaching and of teaching of those people who even call upon his name who try to do away with what's in the Torah by bringing these other books, these other teachings. It's the same thing that they were doing in the Talmud during the Babylon. They came out, they kept most of this with them, and they built fences around it, and they argue over what it means and what it means to them, and then whichever one fits their desire, that's the, the Pharisee or the one calling himself a rabbi that they will go with. So they'll say, in this case, we go with so-and-so, and, -so, and with it, in this case, we would go with such-and-such. Such. It's the same thing. Nothing's ever changed. Nothing. Everybody's adding to or taking away from or changing up. They would seek to change his times, his seasons, his appointed times. We don't need it. We don't need to add or change it. The Torah, the seed of Moshe, five books, those things given to Moshe and Sinai. Anyways. So this flies in the face of the dispensational teaching that the Torah has been done away with, according to Yahushua, though nothing in the Torah has been done away with. All of it, even the laws, which are not popular by today's standards, are still valid for the 21st century so-called believers. What contrast there is between the clear teaching of Yahuwah and the teaching of modern dispensationalism, some are quick to point out that Matthew 5.17, Yahushua claims to have come to fulfill the Torah and the Nabi. Since Yahushua fulfilled the Torah, they say, he has in effect replaced the Torah with himself. He is the Torah. How can he replace himself with himself? Two points need to be considered in response to those assertions. First, Yahushua went on to say the next verse, I tell you the truth until the Shamayim and the Eretz disappear. Not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of the pen will by any means disappear from the Torah until everything is accomplished. Yoshi did not replace, abolish, or abrogate the Torah because he said himself that the Torah would remain until everything disappears. Again, look around. And second, the widespread misunderstanding of Yoshi's word is due to the failure on part of the scripture interpreters to comprehend the rich meaning of the word fulfill. In its and it, I put original, but it really is an original language. 
it's the language that we have today. We have some of the, the Hebrew and some of the Aramaic, um, but the word that they used in Greek actually fits rather well. So, and it's pleru. Standard Greek English lexicon makes this an important observation regarding Messiah's statement in Matthew uh, or Matthew 5 and 17. Pleru is to, full, to fully, completely fill, okay, or to cram or level up, to fully supply, satisfy, execute, verify, accomplish, complete. And he says also to make full or to fully preach and perfect supply or make a bound. Okay, so what did he do? He came to give us a greater understanding, to fill up our understanding. He came to fulfill what was said, how he would come, what he would do, and those things he did fulfill. And he also came, what do he say? Go into every creature, every living creature, and to all the people of all the nations and make taught ones and to tell them the Bashar, the glad tidings of Yahuwah, that to repent, to be sorry, remorseful, Naham, to Naham and Teshubah, to turn back to the ancient path to Yahuwah, because a way has now been forged for you that you didn't have before. He cut off those that he sent out. Read the wedding parable. He sent out to the people that he wanted to come. They'd said no. They killed his servants. So then what did he do? He sent a new servant. And his new servant was Shaul. He went out and he got everybody. But he said, go grab new guests. Anyone who will come. But get them ready. Because what happens if you don't come ready? What happens when you don't come dressed in his Torah? That's his wedding gown for us. His gown is the righteousness of Yahuwah through Yahusha HaMashiach. We are to come draped in his Torah. Otherwise, he'll say, who are you and where did you come from? And he'll slam the door and cast us out into utter darkness. So we're to come ready and prepared. We're to have our lamps filled and be prepared for when the bridegroom comes for his bride. So we see to complete or put an end to, although it can be a proper meaning for this word in some context, it cannot be that when he says not one part of it disappears because the context clearly rules it out. Yehushi emphatically stressed that the Torah will remain, that it has not been done away with. However, a combination of the first two meanings does convey the thought Yehushi was expressing. Interestingly, the Webster's Collegiate Dictionary lists the word perform as a synonym, synonym for fulfill, which means to adhere to the terms of carry out, do, give a rendering, or to carry out an action or pattern of behavior as a synonym for perform. Fulfill implies a complete realization of ends or possibilities. This is precisely what Yahushua was saying when he said he had come he come to completely realize in his lifestyle and his mission all that the Torah and the Nabi had said. And if you place it in its context, we'll be able to fully comprehend the truth which Yahushua was communicating. The Pharisees from the beginning of Yahushua's ministry to the end were accusing Yahushua of attempting to undermine the Torah with his own teaching. Still going on today. And they accused him on a number of occasions of breaking the Torah. Well, their Torah, their Talmud. Again, that just means instruction. So he was breaking it constantly just to show them what a bunch of hypocrites they were. They were placing their Torah and their instructions above our Heavenly Fathers. So it is to remain, well, excuse me, but Yahushua emphatically denies these charges. Yahushua was not trying to do away with the Torah of Elohim, his father, because the Torah is to remain in effect to the end of the age. On the contrary, Yahushua had come to give an understanding of the Torah of Moshe, which he had come to explain it. His purpose was to shed light on the intention of the Torah and demonstrate by his own life how Elohim's Torah should be obeyed in contrast to the legalistic way in which the Pharisees interpreted, practiced, and abused it and practiced the Talmudic instructions or the Torah of the Talmud, the oral laws. And obviously, what do you say obedience was? Love. So obedience and love are, are linked together. So what did he say were the two greatest commands? Love. Love Yah first, foremost, and above everything. And love your brethren. 
as you love yourself. Put them before yourself. Esteem them to be higher. Build up the body. So we see that furthermore, Yahushua not only kept all the Torah himself, but he taught others to do the same regarding the least of these commandments. Yahushua stated, whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great by those. Uh, the emphasis is mine, but if you go look at the words individually, you'll find out it is exactly. And it, the word called is also means considered, will be considered great by those in the kingdom of heaven or the Akut Yahuwah. In Matthew 5 and 19, even the self-righteous Pharisees were not keeping all of Elohim's Torah. For unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the Torah, you will certainly not enter the Malkut Yahuwah. Matthew 5 and 20. The disciple who desires to enter Elohim's kingdom must surpass the Pharisees in his keeping of the Torah by performing even the very least of these commands. Therefore, the Torah of Elohim must have abiding validity, since Yahushua indicated the entrance into Elohim's kingdom is related to the practicing and teaching of the least of these commands. Now, again, all firmly rooted in love, not mechanical operations. And that was the problem. They were just teaching it to do it as a means by which you can enter into his reign. But here he's clearly telling you without love. Shaul said it best in 13 in Corinthians. He says, 1 Corinthians 13, what we call the love chapter. You can give your body to be burnt for the poor. You can give everything you have to someone. And you can speak in tongues uh, or languages of men in Malak, of messengers. And without love, it's worthless. So you could do all of this perfectly, perfectly. But if you have no love in your heart, it was for nothing. So... We understand that what he's trying to teach you here is when you do it, you're now doing it because you love him and you understand his love for you through Yahusha. Yahusha's attitude towards the Torah is further illustrated by the often misunderstood and taken out of context passage of Lucas 16, 6 through 18, which says the Torah and the prophets are not being were proclaimed until Yohanan, which is John. Since that time, the Bashar of the kingdom or the, uh, the message of the kingdom of Elohim is being preached and everyone is forcing his way into it. It is easier for the Shamayin and to the uh, Reds to disappear for them one least stroke of the pen to drop out of Torah. Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery and the man who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. This is also seen in Psalms and Proverbs, uh, also seen throughout scripture. It's not a new thing, but they were teaching something different. So he was trying to fill up our understanding again. He was not declaring the end of the Torah when he said the Torah and the Nabiim were proclaimed until Yohanan, because whatever happened after Yohanan, he did. He came after Yohanan. What did Yohanan say? I'm here, a, a voice crying out in the wilderness, which he's quoting, and he says, for what purpose? He's calling out so that you might draw your attention to the Torah himself, the word himself, who has come to dwell among us. So it, nothing's changed here. I, I don't know why we even uh, think that it might have. And, and many expositors insist he was merely contrasting prediction and proclamation of the coming king and kingdom of Elohim by the Tanakh teachers with the beginning of the fulfillment of these promises by his own life and mission, his attitude toward the validity of the Torah is expressed here as he did in Matthew Yahu 5, which we have already quoted. Shama'in and the Eretz would have to disappear for the least significant detail of the Torah to drop out or to be done away with. The Torah was given by Yahusha. Third scriptural fundamental, which suggests the Torah of Elohim was abiding in its validity, is that Yahushua himself is the Torah. Yahushua said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Psalms 119 says, Torah is the way and the truth. And Deuteronomy 30 says, his words, his Torah, are life. So he is telling us here. He's giving us a secret and insight into the fact that he is the Aleph Ta, the Aleph Beit. He is the first and last. He is everything that is encompassed in Yah's words. And we will see that later where he says, these are not my words. He says, the son can do nothing unless his father shows him. So not only did Yahushua completely obey the Torah during his lifetime, showing how the Torah is to be obeyed, but he also told his disciples, if you love me, 
you'll obey what I command. John in 14, 15. Since the Torah and the commandments of Yahushua then are all to obey these commandments too. The fact that Yahushua is the Torah is evident from numerous scriptures. If you get the Aleph Torah or the Hebrew version, it's like every page. According to Colossians chapter 1, Yahushua is the image of the invisible Elohim, and by him all things were created. And in Hebrews also tells Elohim made the universe or, the, or all that is. Through his son, adding that the Messiah is the radiance of Elohim's esteem. Yohanan, the Bashar writer, that, that is the, the writer of the testimony, explains that no one has ever seen Elohim, but Elohim, the only begotten, who is at the Father's side. Again, this is Elohim, doesn't necessarily always talking about the Father. He says, do you not know that you are all Elohim? So we understand that, that word has many uses. So, who is at the Father's side has made him known. Each one of these passages conveys to the reader the fact that Messiah is the visible son of the invisible Elohim. Elohim, the Father, has never been seen, Yohanan 1.18, because he is Ruach. Yohanan 4 and 24, Yahushua is the one who has made him known. When Elohim appeared to Moshe, it was Messiah whom he saw. Because Yahushua is the image and the messenger of the unseen Elohim. It was also Yahushua who protected Yisrael with a cloud and a pillar of fire pro provided the Israelites or the Israelites with food and water from the rock. Shaul tells us this in 1 Corinthians. Now he says in 10.4 that they drank from the rock, rock that accompanied them. And that rock was Messiah. Is he not the rock of our salvation? Is he not the cornerstone, the chief cornerstone? Therefore, since it was Yahushua who spoke with Moshe, then it must have been his Torah, which Moshe received on the two sapphire tablets, the Ten Commandments and all that was in his, is accomplished in his Torah. Every single word is included. So, and we see, as he says, this is his Torah, why it's his Torah, because the Father has given him all authority. In Yohanan 7.14, again, that's John, about the middle of the festival, well, he's keeping the festival, Yahushua went up to the set-apart place, the Hekau, the temple, and he was teaching, and the Yahudim were marveling, saying, how does this man know letters not having learned? And Yahushua answered them and said, my teaching is not mine, but his. Who sent me? Who sent him? His father. His father told you as my only begotten. His father told you in the first line of Bereshit what he did. First thing he did was bring forth the Aleph Ta, his son, the word. The word that came to dwell among us. In the beginning was the word and the word was with Yahuwah Elohim. And the word was an Elohim. We can get into what you think an Elohim is. And I think of Elohim, I have no idea. I don't think any of us do. And we see this in seven places in the book of Yohanan or John, and uh, also in Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 20. Yohanan 7, 17 says, if anyone desires to do his desire, he shall know concerning the teaching, whether it is from Elohim or whether I speak from myself. He who speaks from himself is seeking his own esteem. So he didn't come to esteem himself. He came to esteem his father. But he who seeks the esteem of the one who sent him is true. And no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moshe give you the Torah? Yet not one of you does the Torah? Why do you seek to kill me? So here he's telling them, look, Moshe gave you a Torah you don't keep. You keep your own Torah. Keep your own instructions, your own ways. So let's not argue about Torah with those who don't believe. Tell them the Bashar, the great news. Let's give them the message that's going to bring deliverance. And for those who do call upon the name of Yah, those that are keeping his Torah, just share with them that his name wasn't JC. Show them that he comes from the lineage that they were looking for. Show them some of the things that were changed by the Masorites so that they can look and see that this was the Messiah. And that he said they didn't kill him, that he laid down his life. He was a willing sacrifice. Maybe if we stopped accusing people of things and we started showing them the truth, the truth might set them free. The Torah can set you free. The Mashiach was the Torah. 
He wouldn't change it. Not one yod, not one tad, not one smallest stroke of the pen. Because what is he going to do? Come to abolish himself? The Torah came to abolish himself. You're going to stand before a righteous and honorable judge. And you're going to stand before him and you're going to tell him one of two things. Forgive me, Father, for all that I've done. I only wanted to please you. Or you're going to say, I didn't keep any of your laws because that would be legalism. So I was illegal, just like I was taught to be. I don't think we're going to say much of anything, but just beg him to forgive you and tell him how much you love him for all that he's done. He accomplished what he came to accomplish and that he, he dismissed the writings that were written against us so that we could live in his way, walk in his path, do things as he said to do them, the Torah of Moshe. Mashiach did that for us. Let's not deny him in our actions and what we add and subtract from the word because we think we're smarter. Let's not do what's right in our own eyes. Let's seek first the Malkut Yahuwah and all his righteousness. Well, we love you guys and we thank you for tuning in again. We'll see you next time. Shalom and take care, guys. Thanks a lot. Thank <laughs> you.